and love are you on i mean i'm coming to you from the schoolhouse for art in this very an amazing spot very uh, very good um, classes here in Cooley Lane. <laughs> well, there's some really very good t- tutors come here, and it's a lovely spot. Great coffee next door, so I'd recommend it. Um, have a look at the links below if you want to know more about my workshops and things. Thanks for tolerating the video. If it goes crazy, you know, it's alright. We, we don't have to. Have but I, I'd imagine I do about twenty minutes. So if someone could time me for the twenty minutes, would you be able to do that? And the video only goes on for eight minutes. So I'm just saying, why do you have me do this? I'll post the finished one on the Facebook page. Jesus, I'm putting myself under pressure there now already. <laughs> okay, so this is the sad green and cadmium red mixed together. That's what that is. <coughs> oh, I never oh, I did put out the yellow ochre, and I never told you that I never put the yellow ochre on here. So sometimes when I mix the cadmium red and the sad green together, sometimes I kind of feel like putting a bit of the yellow ochre in. I'll show you what's like to me. So that's the yellow ochre there. And just because Jordan's got it after the summer we had, got a nice kind of a tan. Um, it might be appropriate after putting the cadmium red and sap green together to put a touch of yellow ochre in. Um, and show us that works. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'm feeling now to, to visualize the space that we might have for on the page. Looking at the there's something kind of like a diagonal from the, the darker you hair here. Um, yeah. I suppose it's an inner language. Each of us will have our own pathway through the painting. And what I'm trying to find is the kind of the direction that I'm going to aim for first. And the shadow coming this way means that um, I'm not really very clear about what I'm trying to say here. But there's something about a diagonal thing from the top of this pair on the left down to the jaw on the right that I want to capture. <coughs> so I'm making more because I've used up all that colour and then that's me. So that's cadmium red mixed with the sap green. And I'm looking at where I can possibly I think I'll leave it down. It's going to be a little bit lighter. So testing it here I wanted to make it lighter. So wet the brush um, and Picking up the colour again, it's a little bit lighter the second time, just to be more dilute. Wetting the brush lightens the colour, is it? Uh, well, yeah, just really, I just wash some of the paint off the brush. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I'm holding it this way, like you'll get used to the consistency of paint. I'm holding the palette vertically so that you, I can kind of see how the colour behaves on the vertical. And if all of the paint was down here, I would know that it's maybe too wet and also it wouldn't contain the mark there if it just the wall would just flood away. And um, so I find this palette helpful for that reason too, that you can see the paint is gathering on the way down rather than just creating a lake straight away. Okay. And all of this is kind of partly leaving myself into or stalling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> all right, so what I'm looking at there is the vertical where the hair. Well, the hair meets the, the forehead on the left hand side, so it's back with that. And then it's pretty much a vertical all the way, all the way down. So it's the, uh, the cheekbone down, down to where the jaw is. I think I'm just finding the jaw here. And it looks to me that um, I like using this brush because it allows me to print an edge and um, quickly establish uh, the side of the face without labouring over a small line, do you know? Um, feel free to have a seat, I've only been standing for a long time now, so I'm going to be standing and you can walk around and get yourselves positioned where you can see. I put a bit of the yellow ochre into that as I bring the colour across, across the face to describe the triangle of shadow that's under the cheekbone there. I want to bring in some yellow ochre. You might find that it helps to half close your eyes as you're looking at the model so that you can see the darks and lights more clearly and forget that it's a lovely face you're looking at even and only just see the darks and lights as though they're jigsaw pieces fitting together. Um, <coughs> okay. um, going back to this edge of the face, it looks to me like it's almost like a, um, a vertical all the way down with just a little step into the neck, little step into the neck there. And then um, 
with your parallel line. So where the jaw stops and meets the neck and where the t-shirt stops and meets the neck, run almost parallel to one another. And, you know, speaking about the triangle here, find ways of simplifying down every move so that you're, it's manageable. You know, you'd never want to feel so scared that you don't know what you're doing, you know. I, I mean, uh, that's natural, that's part of it. But when you do feel that, uh, have a bit of compassion for yourself, breathe in and think, okay, how can I simplify this down? And if you can simplify it down, do something somewhere else. Work up to it, okay? But I, I do find it helpful to seek geometry, seek geometric shapes. So the sides of the face and the ears that are almost parallel to each other, you could say that there's a kind of a, an open triangle for the jaw there. And maybe the top of the above that might be a kind of a, a square maybe where the, the jaw turns in without becoming rigid in it just know that you've got this um this assistance there is assistance there there are ways of finding you know parallel lines perpendicular lines and comparing so when i, when I did half close my eyes there recognizing that all of the neck really is in shadow and that will allow us to know then that the chin is extending out into the light. So I'm just, um, and these brushes, yeah, I'm just establishing the, the general dark of the, of the neck. And what I was going to say about these brushes is that they feel like second nature to me using these, but it'll be like driving a car for the first time if you've not used these before. It'll feel a bit awkward maybe. And you could kind of let it be an experiment for yourself. Um, that's fine. In the shadow across there. What I was going to say is let it be, you see how I, I'm all, I know when I hold the brush this way now it's going to create a, a deeper tone because the paint will accumulate down at the, at the, the tip of the bristles and it'll create a little darker, darker pond for that shadow and meet the lower lip. Okay, and then back up for that lovely hair that's there to me. So there's the kind of diagonal of the shadow as it's um, cast onto the forehead there. I keep thinking of them. Isn't that really oh, weird? What is it? <laughs> Are you, do you kind of go, like, you're, maybe it's an in-breath, and then you're like, something amazing going to call it that. Okay, I'm going to stop. She's put down the spot on. <laughs> okay. So we're still with the cadmium red and sap green. And maybe a touch of yellow ochre in there. And really setting down. You might be kind of thinking, she's not really looking. I'm actually really, really looking for every mark. That's the critical thing. And honouring the moment of noticing what it is and selecting that and then placing it down with commitment. So it's really not to be underestimated this. You know, you're, you're needing to look after yourself very well so that you do 